before you today and there's just one thing that i want to say thank you lord thank you lord for all you've given to me Friday morning you have given us, oh Father God, and we want to thank you, Lord, for all the blessings, everything that you have given us, oh Father, and that we've come here, oh Father, to praise and worship you and to hear from your word, oh Father God. I submit all of us, oh Lord, who are there online and who are here, oh Father, as we're here together in your name, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will come and take complete control, oh Father God. And Lord, as we sing and as we worship you, Lord, we pray that your spirit will move mightily in this place, O oh Father God. Wherever we are, O oh Father God, that you will touch our hearts, O oh Father God. You will heal our land, O oh Father God. And I ask you, Father, to take, to take complete control of this day, O oh Father God. I submit all of us into your mighty hands, O oh Father God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, welcome to another Friday morning, and it's nice to see you all online. Uh, let's start uh, praising our God today. Let's praise and worship our God. It doesn't matter where we are, whether we are here physically or whether you are online. We're all united in Jesus' name, and let's give him all the glory and all the honor today. Amen. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the people of God sing His praise all over the land. Everyone in the valley, come and lift your voice. All those on the mountain tops, be glad and shout for joy. Rise up and praise Him.
God created by human hands. He's not a God dependent on any of us. He's the God of the universe. He's the God of our hearts. And this morning, let's just surrender ourselves to Him. And let's just lift up His name and worship Him for His awesome, awesome presence. God 
dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is.
Father God, for being the awesome God in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for all the blessings that you've poured over our lives, oh Father God. Even in the midst of all that's happening around us, oh Father God, your presence is always with us, oh Father God, and we can put our hope and trust in you, oh Lord. Thank you, Father, for touching our hearts, for helping us to worship you, oh Father God, and we believe, oh Father, it's reached your throne of grace, oh Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Amen. This morning, let us pray for the nation of Bahrain. Father, we lift up uh, this wonderful kingdom of Bahrain to your throne of grace. We thank you, Lord. This is your land. All the lands belong to you, O God. And this morning, we would like to pray, O Father, for your salvation upon this nation. We pray, Lord, that the sons of this earth would one day come to know you, O Father. I pray, Lord, that everything that we do as Christians, as your children upon this land, O Father, will be seeds for the salvation of the sons of this land. Father, we lift up and we ask you, O Father, that everyone in Bahrain, every Bahraini will, will be saved by, and come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we also uh, lift up the land. We ask you to bless it, bless uh, the work of everybody's hands in this land, O Father. We pray that you would bless the expat community. We pray that you would bless your church in this land so that we could continue to propagate your gospel in this place. O Father, let, us, let this light continue to shine brightly in, this dark, in the dark world, O Father. And we also pray, O Father, that uh, you would bless the leadership of this land so that every legislation and law that is passed, O Father, or brought into, into existence will be a law in line with your, your will for this land, O Father. We pray, O Lord God, we cover the entire nation with the blood of Jesus. And we know, Lord, that prosperity comes from you and you would bless this land with your prosperity. In Jesus' name we pray. We'd like to... Uh, hand over the service now to our pastor Samuel Jacob who will be giving us the word this morning. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I would like to greet one of you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for giving me another opportunity to preach the word of God. All of us are into the second week of the last month of 2020. What a great privilege we have to praise Him, to worship Him. Even if we cannot meet together, still we have the connections where we can see each other and hear the Word of God. It has all been given by God to us. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads in the presence of God. Let God speak life into your day this morning. Let God's word speak life into your day and also in all the days of your life. Father, we thank and we praise you. We thank you for the gift of life that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us to come together this morning and to hear from you. Lord, all through these days that we have gone through, your sustaining grace has been upon us. You have protected us. You have provided for us. Thank you, Lord, for every blessing that we are experiencing in our day-to-day -day lives. Help us to have a close walk with you. Help us to know more about you. Help us to seek you more in our day-to-day -day lives. Lord, the world is changing so fast. Lord, there is always a purpose in our life when you have called us and you, and you have separated us. Help us to remember that calling in our life. We thank and we praise you for this wonderful time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
as we sit in the comfort of our homes. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us this morning. We need the word of God to move forward. We are coming to the close of this year, 2020. We have seen the changes that has been happening around the world. There have been many changes that has come into our lives. And whatever change has taken place during these days, some of the changes will remain in our lives for our future. But we need to just be focused upon the word of God. The world is going to a way where God's existence is questioned by many people. The spirit of reasoning is arising in many people's life. People who know God, people who do not know God, the reasoning capacity about God's existence is so massive that you and I need to know that we are living in a world that is so much complicated. In a few days, God willing, we will be completing the year 2020. It is amazing how quickly life can change. And we are, we, we are, we are in a life that is unpredictable. Circumstances can change. People can change. And of all, of course, we know how quickly the weather is changing. But even everything changes, we have a God whom we trust who never changes. That assurance you and I have this morning. So as we search our hearts this morning, every word that is going to be said this morning let it bring meaning into our lives. Let it bring correction into our lives. We need to be corrected. We need to be knowing the word of God every day to lead a life that is pleasing unto him. I have titled my message this morning, The Preservation of Our Life as a Vineyard. The preservation of our life as a vineyard. The wine is a symbol of God's providential care and steadfast love towards his people. God cares for you and me. And his love for us is greater than any other love in the world. According to Mark 4, 24, it says, take heed what you hear. That means you need to consider carefully what you hear this morning. Luke 8, 18 says, take heed how he hear. Consider how you listen. The way you listen and the way you hear changes our perception about God in our life. The question is, to whom are we sensitive? Are we sensitive to God or are we sensitive to the world? There are many things happening in the world. We are listening to many things of the world. Are we becoming more sensitive to what the world is telling about the things that is going to happen? Or are we sensitive to what the word of God says will happen in our lives. We need to be sensitive to the word of God. The text this morning is Isaiah 58, verse 11. And we'll be also having corresponding uh, verses which is in line with this verse. And it says, and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden. If you, are, if you have your Bibles, if you're, if you're looking at the verse, 
underline a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. The Isaiah the prophet speaks of the child of God as a watered garden and a spring of water whose water do not fail. So you and I, according to the word of God, we have been watered by the word of God. And when we are watered by the word of God, there is a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Do you identify these words or with your life is cluttered with stones and rubbish? This is the, this is the point that I would like to make this morning. And according to this, when we read Isaiah 5, verses 1 to 2, Isaiah the prophet says a parable about a vineyard. And, it's, and, it, and he says about the Lord's vineyard, and he says, my well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest wine. He built a tower in the midst and also made a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. So in this scripture that we have read out, if you need to cultivate a vineyard, you need to clear out the stones. There is a time for clearing out the stones. And then you need to build a tower. Then you need to have a fence around. Then you build a wine press. That is what the scripture talks about our life, our day-to-day -day life. A careful study of these above verses makes it evident that the writer has in mind the operation of clearing a vineyard of stones and of collecting materials for making fences, wine presses, and towers. Now, when we read the word of God, three times in the history of the world, God has made a vineyard for himself with the expectation of receiving fruit for his glory. Three times it is mentioned. The first was the vineyard of the human paradise. When we read Genesis 2.15, and the Lord God took man and put him in garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. That was the first vineyard that God had made in for mankind. But we all know that the man's failure brought so much curse the man's faith, disobedient to God, sin came into life and the whole world was affected because of this one man. The second was the vineyard of the Hebrew people, which we have read right now. Isaiah tells us about this in this passage. It says, Isaiah 5, 2, God did everything to ensure that this vineyard would, would produce the best of the fruit for his honor, but instead it brought forth wild grapes. This is the second vineyard that God is talking about in this Isaiah chapter two, yeah, Isaiah chapter five. The third is the vineyard of the Christian church. Jesus himself came to plant this garden and he declared in John five, one and two, I am the true wine. And my father is the wine dresser. Every branch in him, in me, that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that breaks, brings, bears fruit, he prunes and make, and may, and it may bear more fruit. So, what is the message of this text this morning? It is a picture of a neglected and fruitless vineyard. Let us look into our lives. It is, God has said that we need to be, our life should be like a vineyard, like a water garden. 
in such a situation, if we are not achieving that, in, the, in, the, in such a situation, two things we need to know in our life. The cultivation of our lives as a vineyard. We need to cultivate good habits. We need to cultivate godly habits. And when you look into, our, when we have to look into our lives, how is our life? Is it pleasing unto God? Are we bearing fruits? This is the question that you and I need to ask. You may be a believer. You could have been baptized. You may be speaking in tongues. You may be giving uh, offering to the church. But is your life bearing fruit? And now, when you read King Sol about King Solomon's life, King Solomon surveys a promising piece of land strewn with stones and debris. And he writes in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 5, a time to cast away stones. What do these stones identify in our lives? What does the stones identify in our lives? Stones are things that blocks our spiritual life moving forward. Stones are matters that you and I need to identify in our lives, which which does not allow us to progress further. Again, when we read Proverbs 24, verse 30 to 34, it reads, I went by the field of a lazy man and by the vineyard of the man uh, devoid of understanding. And there it was all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone walls was broken down. When I saw it, I considered it well. I looked on it and I received instruction, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, so shall your poverty come like a prowler and you need, and your need like an armed man. So here the scriptures talks about stones that are scattered. In this fashion represents three things. I have just the stones which has been scattered. I just wanted to bring to your attention three things that why the stones are being scattered. The first thing is thoughtlessness. A life that is not fulfilling the purpose of God for his cause. Thoughtlessness. There are young and older people who through recklessness and rash decisions have allowed their lives to go to pieces. There are believers who know about God, but the thoughts that they think, the reckless believing, and the rash decisions that they have taken in their lives have ruined their lives, and also there is no much progress. This is one of the stone, thoughtlessness. You don't think before you do things. God wants us to believe in him. God wants you and me to put him first in everything that we do. When we think the ways God wants us to do things, there'll be no rational decision. God has given us minds to think his thoughts. God has given us mind to accept the word of God. And if we are thoughtless, if we don't think the way God wants us to think, we will never be able to progress in our life. This is one of the stones that which we have to remove. Thoughtlessness. We need to think the way God wants us to think. We need to do things the way God wants us to do things. So thoughtlessness prevents us in moving forward in our spiritual walk. Then there is carelessness. And there is, and it is all over careless because of the car carelessness. What happens is there's a lot of thorns and nettles. What is this nettles? 
Lettuce is a plant with the leaves covered like stinking hairs. These nettles, people, you may be a believer, you may be a God child, but people would not like to communicate with you because you're so careless in your life. And they think by, by they're coming in contact with you, so much, you know, they are not able to take anything from you. You are careless in your life. It represents in our life anger, unforgiveness, irritation, annoyance. Does this represent our hearts, dear brother, dear sister? Does this represent our lives? We need to think about it. Carelessness. Are we careless in doing the words of God? These thorns and nettles are symbols of curse, while the broken wall is the evidence of the enemy attack. In the vineyard, there is a wall, and if the wall is broken, see, God is, as, a, as the scriptures say, he has given us a life as a watered garden where people can come and experience the love of God through our lives. And if we are careless in our life, we will not be able to produce the things God wants to produce us. First is thoughtlessness. The second is carelessness. Ecclesiastes 10, 8 says, he who digs a pit will fall in it. And whoever breaks through the wall will be bitten by a serpent. When we allow the wall of our lives to be penetrated, the substance serpent, the inevitable results will follow. Thorns, nettles, and scattered stones. How is our life? We need to analyze. We come to the close of this year, 2020. Are we still living in a life that is not pleasing unto God? Is our lives with thorns and nettles where people are not able to come and experience love from us? Carelessness. These are small things which we ignore in our lives. Then there is laziness. And the word says, when I saw it, I considered it well. I looked on it and received instruction, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your, your, uh, your, 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 uh, your provision come like a prowler and your need will be like an armed man. Laziness. Dear brother, dear sister, I want you to listen to it very carefully. Laziness is a result of curse, and there is plenty of evidence that it is present in the modern life. This is why many homes are divided. Many businesses are corrupted. And the world in, is in such a mess. Laziness. People want their lives to be easy. They want, they are self-seeking. And this sin, self-seeking sin, has made them to become more lazy in their life. The only way to reverse the situation is to admit the presence of these stones in our lives. Three things. One is thoughtfulness. The next is carelessness, and then is laziness. We need to see into our lives, dear brother, dear sister. These are simple things that are still lingering in our day-to-day -day lives. Are we guilty of thoughtfulness? Are we guilty of carelessness and laziness in our life? We must remember there is nothing less than sin, and sin must be dealt with the cross of Calvary. Is the garden life of yours in a mess? Is it full of rubble and debris? Is it less than what God has intended you to live? Thank God. The verses, the stones can be cleared away. 1 John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But it is not sufficient to admit the presence of stones in our life. We must.
permit the clearance of our stones in our lives. We know it is there, but how are we going to clear these things in our lives? When the condition of our lives is re revealed through the preaching of the word of God and the searching of the spirit of God, we must be willing for these stones to be removed. And it has to, when it has to be removed, this call will need for you to humble yourself. You need to be humble. Then you, you have to be prayerful and you have to be steadfast. You need to be persistent in moving these stones out of your life. No one can pick up the stones without you bending down. And this is only the place where God can meet you and me at the cross with his blessed son, Jesus Christ. That is humbleness. We know that, this, that, that these are preventing us, but you then you need to humble yourself in the presence of God. And you need to humble by yourself. When you hear the word of God, when you know that there is an issue in your life, when you know there is a stone that is blocking you progressing, you need to humble yourself in the presence of God. Nobody else can do it for you. You need to do it then it is evident that no one can pick up the stones without securely holding it up. When you know that these are the stones that is hindering you, take it up in prayer. Take it up in prayer with God. Tell him, Lord, this is what it is I am having. You need to change this, Lord. Help me, give me the strength. Prayerfulness is very much important. We must ask God to deal with our sins, to cleanse our lives and to renew our spirits. And then it goes without saying, picking up the stones is an added task. It calls for steadfast. It is not a one day, one, uh, one day program, dear brother, dear sister. Every day of your life, you need, you and I need to be persistent in seeking God. Because these are the small things which we forget to do in our lives. You and I be willing to drop on the knees. If we drop on your knees and pick up those stones, present themselves and say, Lord, have these, Lord. These are the sins that is spoiling my garden life. Then as you hold them before him, confess them. John 1 again says, reminds us that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Every day before we go to the bed, we need to ask God. Of course, many of us pray. We pray for God's provision. We, we pray for God's guidance. But before we go, we hit our beds. You need to say, Lord, here I am. I'm sorry for all the sins that have committed this day. We cannot be all righteous, dear brother, dear sister. We all do things that is not pleasing unto God through our mind, through our words, through our deeds. You and I need to cultivate the habit of humbleness. You and I need to cultivate the habit of prayer, prayerfulness. You need to pray and you need to be steadfast in your day-to-day -day lives. You need to be persistent Then God will start using you. So the first thing is cultivation of our lives as a vineyard. You need to cultivate so that God will work through you and me in his life. Then the preservation of our lives as a vineyard. You need to preserve. Once you have cultivated, then you need to preserve it. Why do you need to preserve it? You need to preserve it for the future generation to prevent exploitation or destruction. Dear brothers and sisters, we all have families. We are fathers and mothers. You and I, who have the fear of God, who listen to the word of God, who have practiced God in our lives, the children need to see that in our lives. The new generation, as all of us know, is moving so fast where the reasoning capacity of the children is increasing. 
They do not want to believe things that how we have believed. When you ask them to do something, they have a lot of question reasoning pass. And also the world is moving into robotism. Robots are taking place in many, many places. Instead of the humanism, robotism is moving, it's coming in. I heard somebody the other day say, one of the, one of the businessmen was telling me, and he says, even in the churches, even in the churches, things are going to move very fast. There'll be no more preaching of the word of God through pastors or anybody. The robot will be there, the robot will be preaching, and people are going to listen. It's moving so fast. And when you look into the science, how the science is, is developing, the God's existence is, is, is questioned. The more you read, the more you learn, the more you watch the television, our reasoning capacity is changing. Dear brothers, dear sisters, we need to be very careful what we are watching. We are need to be very careful what we are listening. We need to be careful whom we are, we are associating with. You and I need to preserve our lives for God to work through us. The first thing, the stones must be gathered for the wall to be protected. Our lives needs to be protected, dear brothers, dear sisters. First of all, first we said that we need to cultivate a habit. We need to remove the things that is in our life. And we need to gather the stones for protection. We need to have a protection over our lives. Stones out of place can represent thoughtlessness, carelessness, and laziness, but stones in the rightful place can symbolize protection of our lives. How does it protect? Thank God for the teaching of his word and the leading of his spirit, which enables us to protect our lives from the attacks of the world and the flesh and the devil. Three things we have the attack every day in our lives. One is the world, the next is the flesh and the devil. Many times, many times we always find fault with the devil. Devil is doing this, devil is doing that. But do you need to understand the fleshly thoughts? Always, always, it is the one which is making us not to believe in God, the fish, fleshy thoughts. When we neglect the authority of God's word and the sufficiency of God's spirit, the serpent bites, the certain attacks. Outside of the protection of Jesus Christ, you have no hope whatsoever. According to 1 John 3, 8, it says, you must know the mighty indwelling of the Son of God who was manifested to disintegrate the works of the devil. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit in you and me will dis disintegrate the works of the devil. When you have the word of God, and when the Spirit of God is residing in you, when certain things comes into your life, you will know to disintegrate it. We need to have a protection over life through the word of God and the spirit of God. The second thing, that stones must be gathered for the watchtower of perception. Isaiah 5.2, as we read, clear out the stones and build a tower in the midst in order to spot unwelcome intruders, one or more towers were built in the vineyard. When I went to Canada, I visited the apple orchards. I wanted to go and pick up the apples because the, the, plant, the, 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 the apple trees are there, we can go and pluck. We went there and I could see, I have not gone into the vineyard, but I have seen the apple orchards. There, there is a tower. They have built a big tower. I have seen that. And there is also a wall around this orchards. There is a tower, and from this tower, 
somebody is watching. Of course, we, we said that we have a protection around us, but we also need to have a tower in our lives where we can see that the enemy is coming for attack. We, we need to be looking out. We, we need to be vigilant. We need to be surveying the landscape. Jesus told his disciples that you need to watch and pray in Matthew 26, 41. And also the prayer that we pray, when we pray, when the spirit of God starts talking to us, we need to have the boldness to move forward the way the spirit operates through us. We need to be bold to do the things. The dwelling of the Holy Spirit and the instruction of the Holy Word in us is a spiritual radar for us. Both the things we need to have. You need to hear the Word of God and also the indwelling of the Spirit, Holy Spirit. This is a spiritual radar which protects us from the enemy outside. We need to be watchful. In the Songs of Solomon, when you read, in verse, in chapter 2 and verse 15, there is, a, there is a verse like this, and it says, Catch us the foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the wines of our wines, have tender grapes. Catch us the little foxes. I just wanted to give an instruction of these little foxes. Very often, dear brothers and dear sisters, these little foxes find a crack in the wall and unless spotted can enter the vineyard under cover of darkness and nibble away the tender wines. Such destructiveness quickly spoils the promised footage. You and I, know that it is not the big sins that ruin our lives, but rather the small little foxes that slip into our lives through unguarded defenses and spoils of our spiritual progress. Small little foxes, we are not able to see. We, 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 if if the, these things, small things, starts penetrating into our lives. The small little foxes, you say it. You and I need to be very careful if we are not guarding us, we are, if we are not watchful, the enemy will attack us. And when the enemy attacks us, it not only spoils our personal life, it spoils our family life, it spoils the life of our children. We need to be watchful, dear brothers and dear sisters. The third point, the stones must be gathered for the wine press for protection. The stones that is there need to be gathered for the wall. Then you have to have the tower built. Then it, then it is for the wine press. And Isaiah 5, 1 and 2 says, My well beloved, clear out its stones and make a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes. We are told that the stones utilized for the construction of the wine presses is for crushing the grapes, for crushing the grapes to produce good wine. The wine press speaks of the pressures and measures that he exerts upon us in order that the life of Jesus might be seen in us and through us. Of course, we all have difficult situations sometimes coming into our lives. Many times we question why it is coming into our lives. But the word of God says, God allows that to happen in our lives so that we, he, we will be able to see Jesus in us and through us. People will be able to see if you are not comforted, dear brother, dear sister, if you're not comforted, you will never be able to comfort other people. You need comfort in your life. There are people who have been comforting you during the times of trials and tribulations. 
And if you are comforted, when you experience comfort, you can be a comfort to other people. I know one of the families which we have in the church. They are a comfort to so many, so many, so many people, dear brother, dear sisters. And when you look into their lives, they have never disclosed all these things. They have been comforted and that the situation, whatever they have gone through their lives, they know what they have experienced. And now they are a channel of blessing to many, many people in this church. Personally, they attend to everything and especially that sister, she's a blessing to many, many people. Even she is sick, she makes sure that she attends to the calls she makes. She's, she's an exemplary in our church. There are people around in our church who do all these things. They have been, they have been going through a difficult situation. But still, they are a comfort to other people. They have been pressed in different directions in their lives. Issues with their children, issues with their, with their grandchildren, issues with their health, issues with so many things. But still, they produce good wine. They are a comfort to other people. Dear brother, dear sister, the one aspect concerns the cultivation of the vineyard in our lives. As I said, the wine is a symbol of God's providential care and steadfast love, love towards you and me. We need to produce good wine. We are the vineyard of God. We are the watered garden of God. People are looking at us how we are acting, how we are talking, what we are doing. Even in our professions, we can be in good positions. But when people come into our lives, when, when, we, we, when people come for help, when, we come, they, when they come for assistance, are we sharing the word of God? Are we always professional in dealing things? When you and I have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God should be there shown more in our lives. That's what I'm saying. If we are thoughtless, if we are, we are not thoughtful about our life, if you are not care, if you are careless about our life, if you are lazy about our life, and if we are not humble, if we don't pray, do prayer, and all these things will definitely affect our spiritual walk with God. God wants you and me to be a fruitful vineyard. Fruitful vineyard. We we need to have the fruits in our life. In the light of this message this morning, what you have heard, honestly and personally, you search your life this morning. Is it a vineyard or is it a wilderness? Ask yourself, what stones do I need to clear out for God to plant, root and grow in the days to come? How can I be fruitful? Are we over-righteousness? Are we self-righteous? We need to look into our lives deeply. Is there any self-condemnation that arises as you ask yourself this question? Don't be, God is not there to condemn us. God is there to make us fruitful, And when you think about it, do something about it. It's good we can think. Take a purposeful reflection over this week to ask yourself the above question and then write in your answers. Share it with other people who you can, you can, you can trust. Don't share with everybody. You know people who can share your thoughts. You know people who are close with you, who can give an uplift for you, who can pray with you, share with them. These are the things that is hindering me in the progress so that you have people to pray with you, 
We all need prayer partners, dear brothers, dear sisters. Of course, we pray with our wives. Husbands, they pray with our wives. Wives, we pray with the husband. But apart from that, you need a mentor. You need somebody who you can share your heart with. Who knows about you. So make it a point for you to clear the stones that is blocking in your life. So with this, I would like to conclude. Whatever the Holy Spirit is impressing you this morning, seek God. He can change your perceptions. He can change your situations. I always, as I always say, for a believer in Christ, don't use the word problem. We don't have problems. We have situations. If you say that you are in a problem, always some people say, I have a problem. Always I, I have a problem. When you use that word problem, problem is always there to stay. So you need to speak words. When it is a situation, situation changes, but problems will stay. So as a believer in Christ, I encourage all of you who listen to me this morning, never say that you have a problem. As we trust in the almighty God, we only have situations. Situations will change. Problems are there to stay. So when you always speak, speak good words, good meaningful words. And also some people say, when you ask, how is it going, brother? All luck, brother. Everything is lucky. I'm very lucky. You're very lucky. There is no luck in our lives. We, do, we are not lucky. We are God's children. We don't have luck in our lives. And you need to say, God willing, yes, God is there. It's not Never use the word luck, dear brothers and dear sisters. I have seen many people, many believers, and I correct them. There is no luck for us. It's only the will of God. So you need to always say, God willing, I can do that. He's in control of our lives. This is what you need to say. So with this, I just wanted to close my sermon this morning. Before we, we close, I would like to announce, there are a few announcements. I'd like to just announce that this morning. On December the 16th, National Day, we have a day of prayer for the Church of Philadelphia. The prayer will start as Pastor Jake was announced last week. The prayer will start at 10 o'clock in the morning and it will go up to 1 p.m. Uh, 16th, that is on Wednesday, it's a national day, it's a holiday. So request all the members of the church, all the members, every member, we invite you to partake in this prayer. It is going to be a prayer for us to seek the Lord for 2021. How the church has to progress, how you and I need to progress in our spiritual walk with God. You and I need to progress. You and I need to know what is God's ways in our life. Of course, when, you, when we look into 2020, we never expected things will change this way. But one thing we know, God knew everything. And you and I have been sustained 
we have not put to we are not been put to shame of course there are many people who have lost many things but one thing i can tell their purposes god's purposes in their life has not gone in vain his purposes are higher so on that particular day pastor prem kumar will be leading the service on that particular day and this and the prayer will start around over 10 o'clock in the morning and it will go up to 1 pm so request all of you to be a part of it and also um uh, on december the 25th it's a christmas day uh we have a christmas service we uh, a zoom service on friday 25th and then after the service the church school children will be doing a church school program online so it will be after the service and it will go at least nearly for about 2 hours so request all the members to be a part of it on online it will be done on online and uh, pray for the children pray for the teachers they are putting in a lot of efforts so we need your a uh, contribution on that also is to be a part of it the third point uh this is a prayer request from to all of you pastor jacob chandy will be traveling to brazil he'll be traveling on the 13th of december he's he's tra- he, we have got an invitation from the king ahmed global center for peaceful coexistence and our church has been a part of this and we have received an invitation from the king ahmed global center for pastor jacob to be a part of it so he will be traveling to brazil on the 13th and he will be back on the 23rd so he will not be there for the uh, 16th prayer but he will be back on the 23rd i urge every member of this church to pray for pastor jacob chandy he needs our prayer support this is the first time i think he's traveling alone with a big delegation and it is a wonderful opportunity for him to present the church of philadelphia in the kingdom of bahrain and not only that he is going to to different parts uh, in brazil and he is going to uh, i don't know what are the programs that has been lined up but he needs prayer he needs prayer for his health he needs prayer for his traveling he needs prayer for everything every because you know it's not easy for him to travel alone at this age so he needs our prayer support so dear brothers and sisters please pray for him and he needs strength from god to move forward so let's close our eyes and bow our heads in the presence of god and after that uh, once i uh, i finish the prayer pastor jacob will be giving the benediction benediction and let's say a word of prayer Father in the name of Jesus we thank and we praise you for this wonderful time that you have given us thank you lord we were able to hear the word of god or you know the things that is the things that is hindering us in moving forward according to the word of god father we pray that you will make us humble you will make us prayerful you will make us persistent to always to walk in the ways of the lord thank you for this opportunity lord lord i pray for every person who has been involved in this morning service father i pray that you will have spoken to them help them lord to move forward help them to seek you more in their lives it's not in a few days we are going to complete this 2020 one thing we know that lord your purposes are greater than the things of the world 
your purposes in our life are greater. To understand in the walk, in the ways of the Lord. This morning, Father, we pray for all the church services that has been lined up. On the 16th, we pray, Father, you will take control of everything. Holy Spirit, as we prepare ourselves for this prayer meeting, we pray that, Lord, you will strengthen every one of us. And every pastor who's going to be involved, every member who's going to involve, Father, I pray that you will lead them, you will guide them as we seek you, Lord. You will show us to move forward. What are the things that we need to leave behind and help us to move forward in the ways of the Lord. We also pray for the church school, Lord. We pray as the children and the teachers are planning for this church school program, we pray that, Lord, you will strengthen them. Strengthen every child of our church school. Strengthen every teacher of our church school, the admin members. All the things that they have been planning, we just give into your hands, Lord. You take control of it, Father. Especially this morning, all of us to, together, we pray for Pastor Jacob Chandi. Father, we pray that you will strengthen him. Give him good health. Give him traveling mercies. Lord, every person that he is going to meet abroad, we pray that, Father, your name will be glorified. You will be uplifted, Father. Whatever the plans are there for you, for him, Father, we pray that, Lord, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. We send him out with our blessings from the church. Send him out with our, with our, with our prayers, Lord. Lord, strengthen him, Father, strengthen him. The day he starts on the 13th and to the 23rd till he comes back, let your, let your, your presence overshadow him. And we also pray for every person who's going to accompany him. Lord, he's going to meet the higher authorities. He's going to meet people that who he has not met before. And we pray in the name of Jesus. You will use him, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, there's a purpose for the church of Philadelphia in the land of Bahrain. Let it be full for them. Let it be fulfilled, Father. Your purposes are much greater than our thoughts. It is much greater than our prayers. And we pray that everything will be done well according to your will, Father. We completely surrender ourselves this day, Father. We pray that you will strengthen Pastor Jacob Chandi. And also, Lord, we pray for all of us. Lord, through the course of the next week, we pray that your hand of protection will be upon us. Lead us, guide us, and help us to have a closer walk with you, Lord. We thank and we praise you in Jesus. Let me pray. Amen. And Pastor Jacob. Praise the Lord, church. As Pastor Sam mentioned, I am leaving on 13th Sunday afternoon. Please continue to pray for me. Let us also join together to work for the Lord. We are living in a soon changing world. We don't know tomorrow what will happen. That is what happened in 2020. But we have a unchanging God who take care of us, who will be with us. So as we read the word from the Bible today, from the John chapter 15, abide in him. Let us be close to him. Let us be close to him. May the Lord help all the church of the Lord. We are going through a difficult time, I know. Some of the families, some of the brothers and sisters in different ways. A family problem, job problem. But God is great. He can open a way. Let us trust in him. Let us trust. Trust means abiding, holding him. Receive the blessings. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Father God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you forever and ever. And the children of God say, Amen and Amen. May God bless you all. Let us remember 
and pray i also will pray and cover in their church in the hands of god may god bless you god bless you all thank you thank you